Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. You know, it really is something. It really is something to, to be alive now and to be available for what's coming, to be available for what's here now and what is coming. I mean, I, I think for most of us, we can sense a real shift, a real quantum change, that something, something is being born and something is fading away, that some level of new paradigms are right at the cusp of, of manifesting and bringing with it an experience that we know we want, that we know we hunger for, that we know that that inner heart that we have just cries out to know love, the truth, cries out to know our connection between all our brothers and sisters on the planet and all the, the dolphins and whales. We know that there's not the separation that somehow we have been led to believe up until now. We know that there's a way and an experience that we as human beings can have that transcends all the differences and all the separations, or the seeming separations, or the things that are so tiny in the context of the, the vastness of our experience of that love, of our connection, of our oneness. And we can feel it, and we can feel the changes, and we could see them coming in a way nonlinear, in a way unexpected, in a way unreasonable, in a way amazing. And yet there they are in full bloom. I mean, we talk about it a lot in terms of bridging, where, you know, we started this show about 15 years ago, and we've been doing it pretty consistently with this extraordinary volunteer crew. And it started out going to public access stations and cable stations, and then satellite stations all over Europe. But mostly it was in the United States. And you know we'd send out tapes and, sh uh, well, later on DVDs, but all different kinds of tapes and all different formats to hundreds of cities across the United States. And every month we'd send out these different shows. And they were on you know, three or four times a week at a certain time. Then all of a sudden, at, literally out of nowhere, the internet comes. And then the internet comes, and then Google comes, and then YouTube comes, and then all this incredible video and bandwidth comes. And now the bridging shows, all of them, all 251 of these shows up until this moment, are available 24-7, seven days a week, all the time, for free. We upload them once, and they're available for everyone in the world. And we can feel those new paradigms growing, that, that we're on the bridge between heaven and earth. And these are tricky times for us because we're leaving things behind. We're leaving ways of being behind. We're leaving ways of experiencing certain things behind to come into that love. We're leaving fear behind. We're leaving the doubt of separation behind. And we're coming into the experience of more and more our connection, our oneness, our love. And these are the times for that. And in that, we're coming two new things and coming back to old things in a way. And, and there have been so many new developments and understandings of, 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 in a way, old things like pyramids and, and different kinds of calendars and all that. And tonight's guest, in a way, has dedicated his life to the recognition and the knowledge of how certain things, of how the Mayan calendar, how this concept of 2012, how it how it affects that and how it is all tied into this coming into love, this coming into consciousness. Uh, Carl Johann Kalamann is a world-renowned author, he's a speaker, and literally he's recognized as the foremost, one of the, certainly one of the foremost experts on the Mayan calendar and this whole concept of the year 2012 and the end of calendars and the end, end of days and all those things, which he will speak about as really no one else can. And he's the author of this extraordinary new book, The Mayan Calendar and the Transformation of Consciousness. And you know, for us here on Bridging, there are so many spokes on the wheel and so many ways to reach that inner 
inner knowing, the inner knowing of our connection. And Carl has come with a new way. I mean, although, you know, in the past we've had uh, Jose Arguez, who also was a, a strong uh, proponent of the Mayan calendar. But so many voices are coming from so many different angles and so many different spokes on the wheel to say, come into this knowing, come into this love, come into this consciousness. That's what we're here to do. That's what we and you, as human beings hunger for. That's the cry of our heart, every one of our hearts. It is not to acquire more land. It is not to get a bigger bank account. That's all well and good, but the cry of our heart, the healing of our heart, the healing of this human condition, the healing of this planet Earth is with our recognition, our experience, our realization of that truth, of that consciousness. And we're just so fortunate to have Carl, to, to have his passion and his dedication and his commitment to that recognition and that knowledge and his, his spoke on the wheel to, to, to be here to so passionately talk about it. And as most of you know, we show videos of art, of music, of, of all different kinds of things. And tonight we're so blessed to have, we're not even showing, it's, it's a 15 minute piece and we're showing about you know, half to two thirds of it. Uh, Bilyana Banchatova. Uh, has produced this extraordinary art video with her art and extraordinary music and all that. And also, as most of you know who've watched the show before, in the middle of this extraordinary healing art project. It's international, it's all artists from all over the world. And the way it came was as a dream, as a vision, as a healing, as an acupuncture for the planet to, to reach out to the world and say, come through bridging, come through this vehicle of, of this media and allow us to show your art through the internet, through this television show, through the media. Uh, produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. Doesn't matter what size, what format, what medium. You produce it, we'll show it on the show, we'll show two tonight as, as I'm talking about it. And we'll have art exhibits. The new studio we're in actually is a semi-art gallery now and will be more so. And we'll have art exhibits here and art openings and gallery openings and just beautiful things with this art that's part of a healing for the planet, part of an acupuncture. And again, anybody who wants to participate, there's no skill level, there's no time frame, just the intention to be part of the healing. So the art we're showing tonight are two beautiful pieces. One is from a local friend of mine, I think he's actually in the audience tonight, Roland White, and then another piece by a Biljina. Oh, billion. I, I've got it wrong, and my beloved's from Croatia, and she keeps trying to make me say it right, and I seem to not do so most of the time. So, okay, join me in a short meditation. We'll have beautiful video, beautiful art, and, you know, the passion of Carl. So please, join me. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, the video, the first part, you're going to see it, it's two different parts of an art video by Biliana uh, Banchatova, the uh, original soundtrack from Rivers of Stars, Layers of Sky, created by Rob Somerville, uh, Biliana's art video, and then we'll see art from uh, Biliana, and uh, Carl will be with us, so enjoy.
Hi, everybody. Welcome back. That was a beautiful video. You'll see more of it in a little while. And also, the picture you're seeing in between Carl and I is uh, Bilyana Banchatova's uh, Bridging Heaven and Earth. And uh, Bilyana is a spiritual teacher. She's a healer. She's an artist. And she lives in Toronto, Canada. And she's a native Macedonian born in South Africa. Now, here's what she said in producing this piece for the Bridging Heaven and Earth Healing, uh, International Healing Art Project. Bridging Heaven and Earth stands as a bridge that initiates and inspires ancestral awakening and collective divine opening. This art piece is dedicated to our children who are to be the light workers and joy of the new world. Inspirational moments, Bridging Heaven and Earth. What does Bridging Heaven and Earth represent for you? And I wonder what magical images, thoughts, and emotions are stirred within your soul and wider in your community. The invitation is for joining the network of building bridges so we may collectively awaken and fine tune our divine co-creativity. As I was praying and calling Bridging Heaven and Earth, I thought of birth and how everything that manifests today is in a way an embodiment of alchemical mating of the past, present, and yes, the future. Every form, thought, action, movement is as reaction that weaves upon an eternity. So it made me wonder that the threads of these prayers are bridging the fibers of my very own soul. I heard the ancestral voices echoing the eons of memory deep within me and channeling the new light of the future. As I allowed myself to paint, feel, and touch the source of this energy, I could see it moving me into waves of color, sound, and dance, stirring in the seeds of life my visions calling home. Then it happened when the eyes became the seeing and the ears start listening. In that moment, everything was possible. With my ambition at hand, I called in not one, but the rays of seven colors, which naturally stood clear side by side and awakened something that I had forgotten, my very own inner sun. I decided to walk on this bridge and whisper words of light, love, harmony, peace, serenity, compassion, forgiveness. That is when I saw the graces of these names shine through like your very own soul, creating a grid of light that will connect us all, moving throughout the planet, expanding constellations of stars, opening doorways beyond my wisdom. The invitation is for everyone, from young to elder, to join in the whispering words of light, sharing prayers, stories, and sing the songs of building bridges, so we may hear again and again the sacred geometry of our very own soul. So that's what Billy and I wrote about her experience producing this extraordinary piece. So, and literally everyone, everyone on this planet can be part of the healing, can be part of the, the, the collaboration, the creativity. So check out our website, heaventoearthart.com, and join us. Any format, any size, anything. Just whatever manifests through you based on the theme, Bridging Heaven and Earth. So please join us. So we're honored to have Carl with us. And finally, we get to talk to you after we've been sitting for a while. So why don't you talk about, when, we, when you first came in, I asked you how your passion started for the, this Mayan calendar and, and what it meant to you. Why don't you talk a little about that? OK. Well, <clears throat> it really started in 1979. And um, in that time, I was a graduate student uh, in uh, toxicology in you know, very established academic science at the University of Stockholm. And I decided to make a journey to Mexico and Guatemala. And um, it just um, it just changed uh, everything, so to speak. Uh, I, um, I got to see the pyramids, and uh, uh, I got contact with the Maya people and fell in love with them. And they would also signal to me, at least as I interpreted it, as that there was something special with me. You know, they would come up and they would give me some little gifts like esparati, you know, and and I don't think they would do that normally. It was some singer, something told me that here is uh, the purpose of my life. And um, then 
I, I, I heard about the calendar and uh, the calendar that would be coming to an end. And, uh, but at that time, very, very few people had started to sense that there is some depth here, there's some reality here. And uh, the, the, the tour guides and the, the, they, these people, they would say, this is just superstition. Um, but at that time, the very few people's first people in the modern world were starting to sense that there is something here we've been missing. And I just felt they were right, we wrong in our way of, of looking at time. And so I came back then uh, and um, with a completely new outlook of, of what my life was about. Uh, and then I, I still con con continued in science another 13 years. And then finally I decided to abandon that career and, and devote myself entirely in 1993 to making the Mayan calendar meaningful to modern people. To uh, present it in such a way that people can see that uh, uh, there is, this is really a calendar that bridges heaven on earth. Uh, I mean that literally, so to speak. In other words, what the Mayan calendar is, is a description of what you might call heavenly energies, uh, um, archetypes, uh, polarities of consciousness that is transmitted from what the Maya would call Hunabku uh, or the heart of the heavens or what I prefer to say the cosmic world tree which we are in resonance with and through this resonance our perception of the world, our creativity uh, uh, and everything that belongs to human civilization and even animals uh, world so to speak actually emanates from this central intelligence uh, principle in the universe and uh, uh, that is, is something that I think is, is, is such an important message and something so important for people to know that, that I, I decided to simply make that to my, my mission that I've been pursuing ever, ever since that time. Wow. And, and so more and more as we're coming in, that the Mayan calendar was tied to the year, the Earth year 2012. So why don't you talk about with that connection and people's response to it and how people are responding now and what you think about that. Do yeah. You? Well, I think, first of all, I, if it's all at possible, I think it's best to avoid saying that the calendar is coming to an end uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, one is that there are Mayan dates deep into the future. And the second is that it's not really an end. There is just one single inscription from the ancient Maya that talks about this fact, this, this time we're approaching. Just one single. It's amazing. People are intuitively people sense everywhere. There's something going on now. You talked about it. It's that we, we, we're living in amazing times. Uh, but mostly that's, that's an intuition that people have. And so they hear the, the 2012 and so forth. And then amazingly, it's just one inscription that actually talks about it. And which is not strange because they lived 2,000 years ago. And why would they have put, paid so much attention to what, what is about to happen here on this planet? But this inscription, as it's read now, it says something like, the nine foundation entity will appear in its full glory. That's, that's what we're coming to. And what the Maya would use as metaphors for creations are houses, the building of a house. And so, the pyramids that they built down in, in present day Guatemala and in Mexico, they were actually metaphors for creations. And the creation that takes place in nine levels especially. Because the most famous pyramids, the pyramid of or the inscriptions in, in Palenque, uh, the, the, uh, the pyramid of uh, the uh, plumed serpent in uh, Chichen Itza, the pyramid of the jaguar in, in Tikal, they're based in 
built in nine different levels. And really what evolution has all the been about is a climb of nine levels. And these levels, if you study it in detail, you can see that it perfectly correlates to nine levels of, of, of consciousness. So it's an evolution from the beginning of time to including our, our present time and up until uh, 2012 that uh, is now about to be complete. The, in other words, it's like the building is getting ready. And this, the, it's, it's wrong to talk about that as the end of something. It's, it's like, and, and sometimes you hear these kind of silly Hollywood productions and, and a lot of other people that are speculating that this is the end of the world and stuff like that. And it's like expecting that uh, when you put the last brick in a house, the house will collapse. Th that's the kind no. of logic that, that that's, no. this is about. Mm -hmm. And the, the, it's a little bit problematic that not everyone has understood that these, there are nine levels which, which they talked about. And uh, mm, mm, these levels, if I uh, continue a little bit, they each have their own frequency. So at the very bottom, it, it, it starts with a, 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 a wave of evolution, that's 16 billion years. And now we're up uh, at, at a level where it, it's down to 13 years, and there's one level yet to come, which will be only as short as 234 days. And uh, each level uh, develops a new frame of consciousness for the human beings emanating from this cosmic world tree, from this heart of the heavens as the contemporary Maya will talk about it uh, as. And we are then in for quite some I I amazing times, a, a, a frequency increase in... And speeding up in terms of Earth time, so everything's happening faster. So the energies are increasing and faster faster. <laughs> so, yes. so it's almost like in a human body, it takes a certain thing to adjust to it. It affects everything. Yeah. Now, why don't you talk about that? Well, each of these, each, each of these uh, levels of evolution have their unique rhythm or th their unique frequency. And, uh, and they, they're subdivided. There are nine levels like this, upwards, so to speak. But then they're subdivided to a sequence of 13 gods, each imprinting. Now, I don't believe they're gods in the real sense, but energies that are imprinting an archetype, a mindset on the human beings. And what is happening is that these are condensing with every level 20 times. And we who are the little ants in this big, big uh, scenario, so to speak. We just think that everything is moving faster. Uh, and really what it is, is that the frequency of the divine process of creation is speeding up. And uh, that's, uh, uh, th that, that requires of us some surfing uh, skills, I think. And preparation. Uh -huh. and, and how would you learn how to surf and prepare? <laughs> that would be that would be in people's minds <laughs> at art. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, we had this thing um, a couple of weeks ago uh, called the conscious convergence, uh, where I think for the first time in history, you might say, a global medicine wheel was pro uh, 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 created and it was the basis of a of, of a, uh, a ceremony. Um, but the, the, the real uh, mm, sort of reason for the conscious convergence here was for people to set the manifest, uh, set the intention of manifesting unity consciousness. And uh, <clears throat> um, because it's not true that all of these nine levels have generated unity consciousness. But as far as we can tell, the ninth and the final level up there, that is going to shift our perception of the world to back to unity consciousness. And so 
that I would say is, is the sort of the minimum. If you want to be part of this transformation, the, the minimum is to say, yes, I'm, I, I'm in for it. I, I want to be a co-creator. I will commit to, uh, to that particular transformation of consciousness and live my life in accordance with such a transformation. So I think that's the minimum. Um, and in the way I present the Mayan calendar, I always sort of put the emphasis on this, what I look upon as the positive, as the desirable, which I'm also absolutely con uh, convinced is the... The actual... The actual uh, intended right. uh, end result by the cosmic plan, so right. to speak. Uh, having said that, it doesn't mean that I think this will be easy, that the world would just look the way it has been and, and we go to work as we always done. No, I think it would be, be very difficult. But I, I, at the same time, I do want to say that it's all for the good, it, uh, in my view, what I call good. And, and why, what I call good then is, is the, 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 the peace, the, uh, uh, the unity, uh, not only between human beings, but uh, all over, but also between ourselves and nature and, and the animals and, uh, and so forth. It is really, in my perception, all for the good. Um, and then uh, I think, uh, so when I say preparation, I, I mean that, that this intention uh, uh, to, to manifest unity consciousness. And, um, but I think how to do that exactly will look very different between different individuals because we, we're coming from different places and, and we, we have different skills and uh, missions and, and, and everything. And it's just what we can do is to, to set the intention and, and, and work from, for that. I mean, so, throughout history, there have been like different techniques to, to, to in a sense, come in contact with that, uh, you know, meditation or, uh, you know, coming together as a group or service or those particular, you know, words have been used. How do you think that fits in here? Is that part of this evolution, this change? Yes, I think so. Um, it's, you know, you can even see that there have been different on different levels in this pyramid, different waves, people have had different ways of relating to the divine. You know, you might say the, the, the fifth wave, which is, goes back 100,000 years and includes the cave art painters, the Ice Age people and so forth, people were probably just in unity with nature and uh, uh, even with, with the animal souls and these kind of things. Then came the, the sixth wave, which started 5,000 years ago, which is maybe the most well-known, the long count, which really brought in dualistic consciousness to people. And it, it created a, a perception of, the, of God or the divine as some kind of a person and very often a judgmental person, because it was an era of separation. And there are good sides to that in terms of the kind of world that has been created, but it doesn't produce unity, obviously. Right. Something's gained and a lot is lost. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, that's true for all of these oh, things. Right. Exactly. And then came another wave, 1755, you know, basically when this this particular nation, the United States, was seeded, and many other things happen in the world. It's sort of the modern era, where people really wasn't dualistic. They were just in darkened. They're, they're old. You know, we'll do, maybe we'll talk about the darkness in the next period. Okay. We're going to show another video and bring out another art piece. So let me, okay. actually, yeah, we'll get to that. But we have, we're going to have plenty of time to okay. talk about that and moving from the darkness to the okay. light. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to show the second half of the billionaire uh, art video. It's beautiful. You've seen the first part. The original soundtrack, again, is uh, created by Rob Somerville. Uh, who's a, a co-creator with Billion of that piece. And then we are going to see a beautiful piece by Roland, 
Uh, and this is what Roland uh, White from LA talks about, his piece, Mother Moving Towards the Galactic Center. This project is something that I want to be a part of because one of my joys is in helping others to heal. It is strange that I started this artwork months before with a question mark on my mind as to why. Call it coincidence, I call it intention personified and manifested as truth, your project. Thank you for allowing me to be part of this insightful project. And that's the piece you'll see soon, and that's by Roland, beautiful piece. Uh, mother moving towards the galactic center. So here's the billion uh, second half of the art video. Enjoy. Welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. Thank you, Bilyana, for sending it. Thank you, Rob. Uh, we'll show more of it for the upcoming show, so watch for it because 
we only showed about a half of it, and there was so much more beautiful art and beautiful music as part of that. And the incredible piece you're seeing in between Carl and I now is Mother Moving Towards the Galactic Center by a great friend of Bridging, Roland White, uh, from L.A. He's actually up in the audience, as I mentioned earlier when I read what he, he you know, talked about when he did this piece. And, you know, again, you know, the opportunity is to join us and to be part of this healing, to be part of this collaboration, to be part of this creativity, to be part of the, the return to love on this planet. And it's a, one way to do it, so please join us. Anybody's welcome to. HeavenToEarthArt.com, HeavenToEarthArt.com, and call us, email us, and everyone's welcome to be part of it. So we're back with Carl. So we were going to talk earlier, we mentioned in the first section about you know, coming from darkness to light and, and what the Mayan calendar talks about that. So why don't you help us with that? Yeah, okay. So the way it works is that each of these levels, each of these waves are of consciousness is dominated by a particular polarity between light and darkness. And so, for instance, on the sixth wave, the, the one that spans six, uh, 5,000 years, back, the long count, the, the, left, the light fell on the left brain half and the darkness on the right brain half. And so people's intuitive abilities were suppressed, but their rational abilities were, were uh, um, strengthened. And it created a, a perception of the world and a, uh, 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 that was based on a, a very dualistic mentality. There are good people, there are bad people, and it's us and them. And in so a right forth. way, in a wrong way. Exactly. And, and the religions of that era became very patriarchal and based on a separation because the people's minds were separated through this. Separation between me and, my, uh, and the divine. Now, when the seventh wave comes, which is 1755 in the Gregorian calendar, it shifts again but it shifts to a complete endarkenment. In other words, people no longer has the sensitivity to their spiritual energies out there. And the result was that that was the beginning of the industrial era, where what people basically have cared about has been the material aspects of life, uh, production and consumption and economy in that sense. And you and I, we were born into that particular era. That's where we kind of coming from. And, uh, <clears throat> but um, a couple of decades now, we've been influenced by the incoming eighth wave. And it really, the big quantum step really happened in early 1999 when it was truly activated. And that shifts again, and it enters the, uh, the light on the right brain half which is the intuitive size, and the darkness falls on the, on, on the rational left brain half. And so when that happened, uh, people have, uh, since then, people have be again gained, regained this sensitivity to, to spiritual energies out there. And of course, it doesn't affect everyone. But it's, it's a fact that it's out there as a, as, as a significant current in society that, that, that has changed and, and completely over these, I don't know, 20, 30, 10 years. I don't know exactly where to draw the line. And, and people are starting to see there are spiritual energies here. But, <clears throat> you know, the ninth wave, as I see it, is not going to uh, bring, uh, it's not just going to be this dualism favoring the right brain half. It is a complete shift to an enlightened, transparent, no, no filter for the human mind. And I believe that is like a return to God. Um, you know, the, the eighth wave with the, all our sensitivity to energies, that's a step in that direction. But usually, the focus has been in the fascination of all these, again, separate energies, if you know what I mean. Uh, you, you may be fascinated with, like I, with time energies, Mayan energies, with, with earth energies, or, or anything. There's so many things uh, out there. But <clears throat> the, the wholeness is still not attained. 
In other words, we, we still um, have to reconnect with the all. And I believe that's what the ninth wave is, is giving us an opportunity to do. Um, and, um, um, uh, uh, and it's not like a God in the sense of, of the, the old ways that somebody talks about this is the way God is and all that kind of stuff. No, uh, I think we will be given the chance to just ourselves completely experience what this means. And once we come to that point, once our, our uh, consciousness will no longer be polarized, we will create a completely different world. Because reality will be different for, to us. We will experience it very differently. We are like the fish. The, the consciousness to us is like the water is to the fish. And uh, uh, we, we are shaped by these polarities. And uh, um, th that reconnection, or, or, or this return, I should say, to the divine source will mean that we won't be creating the kind of conflicts and uh, all these kind of separating um, waves of being and thinking that we've been doing up until now. And that's, the, uh, as I understand, that's the end result, that's the intended end result of the Mayan calendar. And so it's, it's an exciting path, but I think we'll all have to be open to that flexible. is flexible, <laughs> would be flexible good, right. surfers in these rapidly shifting waves. But, and, and all the more important does it become to actually hold our intentions and, and see what's really, what, what, where, where do we want to go. The cosmos will support us through these waves. And we can give a timing exactly for how that will play out. But we will also that we will also need to do our part. That's co-creation. Uh, we are needed. We the we the Mayan calendar is all about us. It's not about some star system there. It's not about that or this will happen in in the sky or in the earth or anything like that. It's all about us. That's a very important message, I think. And. Uh, uh, it's, a, it, it's an opening for us to be part of a transformation of consciousness. And I think that's where we should focus. Yeah, that's beautiful, really. And, you know, I mean, we talk about it, and we've talked about it before, you know, on different shows, and even at the opening, I talked about spokes on the wheel, and really we want to get to the center. You yeah. know, and the spokes are, in a sense, irrelevant, but we want to get to that experience, that realization, that full recognition of what we are, which is part of that whole. Yeah. And, you know, we yeah. talk about it as at some point the Father and I are one, and then everything's different. Yeah. And that's in essence what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was thinking as we were talking, and, and you know, probably <laughs> just because of one reason or another, uh, Maybe it almost seems out of order, but what does the Mayan calendar have that the Gregorian calendar or the other calendar doesn't have? Why is there such a, yeah. a, an aversion to one? I mean, you know, it's arbitrary days in a sense, or, or not. Why don't you talk about yeah, that? Yeah, right. What makes the Mayan calendar special? As opposed to, As you know, opposed January, to, February. Yeah. Well, right. the basic reason is that the Mayan calendar, the prophetic Mayan calendar, is the only calendar of our planet that is not based on astronomical cycles. It is not based on astronomical cycles. And why would that be better? Well, it's, it means... Or different. Well, different. Yeah. It, it means that it is based on these cosmic polarities that are emanating from the, the, the heart of the heavens. There is like a giant axis that goes through all the entire universe. And this is, it's been quite recently, five or six years ago, it was actually demonstrated by, by mainstream science that the universe rotates around the axis what the ancients talk about as the tree of life. And uh, our, what that means is that these energies pervade the universe. And uh, uh, the other calendars are based on small little cycles that happen here in our local solar system. Um, so this is just bigger and more vast and, yeah. and a higher view in a sense. Right. 
and uh, uh, but also the, the fact that these energies are not of a physical nature, so to speak, at least not that we can uh, uh, we can show the effects. It's no no question of a doubt that the, these uh, in waves uh, have effects, but we we can't measure them. We can't uh, we can't see them directly, so to speak. But some people who who are theoretic experts in the Mayan calendar talk about. The, the uh, um, Gregorian calendar, I guess, the, the normal January, February, yeah. as being so destructive and so hurtful. How do they mean that? I never could really figure out because it's broken up into the wrong segments and we, I don't know, we go to well, sleep and get up at the wrong... I couldn't figure it out, but what is the theory behind that? Well, you know, I don't necessarily share that view myself. Uh, uh, but I do think that when you go into the Mayan calendar with the nine waves, it also means that you are going into be informed about how your consciousness is changing, how the cosmos is changing your consciousness. And I think if you want to be part of this transformation, it certainly helps to know that. I see. Uh, and the, 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 the other calendars that are astronomically based, they will not be guiding here. You know, because the astronomical cycles, they'll be going on forever, and there's nothing special here in 2012. Right. Uh, so, so you'll miss an important uh, piece of information uh, if you're completely stuck in, in, mm -hmm. in the Gregorian calendar. So it's more than an explanation of something. It's a... almost it has a different energy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I would say the Gregorian value, uh, uh, calendar has no prophetic value at all. But the, the Mayan calendar certainly has, because they're charging, they charting these shifts in consciousness with the different energies. And from that, you have some way of, of seeing what is going to happen. That's prophecy. OK, so we're. In the Gregorian calendar today is August 14th. Now, in the Mayan calendar, would this be, what would today be in the Mayan calendar? Well, um, how does that work? You know, generally or today, or, you know, just. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I would, primarily, I would look upon it as in, in the context of the waves. I see. The longer waves. So uh, a wave started in 1999, early 1999. That is 13 energies subdivided into seven days and six nights. Like movement forward during the days, rest or even distraction during the nights. And the way I put myself in the context of the Mayan calendar right now is that uh, we are in the sixth night, and we're about to enter the seventh day, which will happen November 3rd of this year, which is sort of the, the, the fruit of this whole wave will manifest with that particular energy. And so that is a time when people are, are uh, uh, planning to have events uh, across the world, and um, it will have a little bit of a different um, tone to it compared to the conscious convergence. Uh, it will be about something about um, uh, unifying the divine masculine and the divine feminine. It will have about something about unifying the mentalities of East and West. Um, and uh, that's already starting to plan for, be planned for uh, in the world. And so th the upcoming of this particular seventh day, the fruition part of this wave, is, is what I'm looking for. That's where I'm placing myself in, in, right and now. And then after the seventh, there's an eighth and a ninth, but the, in terms of... No, no, there's not an eighth and a ninth day. Sorry. No, wave. Oh, wave. Yeah, so, so, no, sorry. So, the, it's uh, the the seventh day is oh I see what you're saying the fruition of the eighth wave, wave I see and then on I top see. of that the actual ninth wave right. will, will be, be becoming so in a sense I mean we've talked about this on the show before it's almost like the duality coming into the oneness yes and that's how yes. if you see the yeah. the waves shown I think I've seen on your website yeah. it kind of comes up like that right it? right right 
So it sort of gives an explanation to why we are changing, people have been changing, that there is this uh, um, desire for unity uh, uh, that wasn't there uh, if you go back a couple of decades. There is this uh, tremendous sensitivity for different kinds of energies. Uh, there is this also sense that maybe much of the kind of so, uh, society that has been created on the materialist world is about to fall down or crumble. And yeah, it doesn't it, serve anymore. It doesn't serve anymore. People are starting to see new values. And uh, this ultimately comes from a shift in consciousness that you can understand from the Mayan calendar. Mm -hmm. It's a tremendous under tool of understanding. That's how I perceive it. So in other words, it can, it can prevent you from being drawn into the fear because you see yeah. it has a road map. You're on a road. Exactly. It, it shifts you uh, uh, around um, f from to see that there is a good end result, that it, uh, there is a direction going somewhere. What the divine... This is our destiny. This, this is, is our, our destiny. And it won't be easy. We won't like everything that happens there because we're all entangled in the kind of society the way it looks now. Yeah, there's tremendous momentum for yeah. the craziness and this disharmony. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it makes a big difference to see that there is something at the end there that, that's completely different and uh, many people would like to be part of. Okay, in 30 seconds, what do you want everybody in the world to know about you know, the, the gifts you've been given over these last 20 or so years? Well, I just want to, people to, to see that uh, we are really part of a, of a divine plan. A, divine, a very exact time plan, not any loose, so to speak. It really, shifts are happening, quantum shifts happens at precisely the certain times in the Mayan calendar. And that uh, I just want to encourage people to, to see that and to uh, choose to become co-creators in this process and find the tools, find the means to manifest unity consciousness especially with the ninth wave and then I think everything would we'll just work fine. fine. <laughs> All right, well that's beautiful and it's just about where we've come to the end. So again, you know, thanks to everyone involved with the show. Thank you for watching. You know, watch again, tell your friends because this is extraordinary information. It's important information. And it's about a vibration of inclusion. It's about a vibration of infiniteness. So and we're all part of that. So if you want any information, it's Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. Good night. We love you. Thank you.